Before we get into the video today, I'd like to tell you all about the 23rd Archive, today's sponsor, where you can read free science fiction, dystopic zombie superhero apocalypse fiction, as well as choose your own path adventures, and more. It's completely free, though I definitely recommend subscribing to their Patreon to support independent storytelling. You might even see something from yours truly in the future. The link is in the description. Last time, we established that our universe is a terrifying, unfeeling beast. We covered the universe's only shooting star, which travels faster than any star we've ever observed, and leaves a trail behind it 13 light years long. Boite's Void, which is almost entirely devoid of matter and other galaxies, Venus, which really needs no introduction and is basically hell, an exoplanet where it rains diamonds, and the nightmarish Bird Galaxy, where three supermassive black holes are in the violent process of merging. If you haven't already, be sure to check part one out after you've finished watching this video. Today we'll be tackling such nightmarish subjects as magnetars, scorching hot and violent super-Earths, pulsars, and more. But first, be sure to hit that like button, comment your favorite places in the universe, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Minds Horizon, and this is Science Get. As we've established in previous videos covering magnetars and how freaking terrifying they are. Be sure to show those videos some love, by the way. Links in the description. Magnetars are thought to be the result of the collision between two neutron stars. In the distant galaxy of NGC 4993, two neutron stars finished their spiral dance of death and slammed into one another, generating a jet that nearly moved at the speed of light. This jet was the result of a type of explosion we call a kilonova, which is one of the most destructive forces that we've observed thus far. The merger of neutron stars occasionally lead to the formation of a different type of neutron star with an extremely powerful magnetic field called a magnetar. These objects should be more than enough to give any scientist nightmares. In our video on the neutron star collision we observed last May, we said that if you were to come within 1,000 kilometers of a neutron star's surface, its magnetic field would be so powerful that it would dissolve the bonds between the molecules in your body and stop your natural bioelectrical processes that it would be like being snapped out of existence by Thanos. But the truth is a bit worse than that, because the gravitational forces would likely also tear your body apart, maybe even before the magnetic field has a chance to wreak havoc on your molecules. Super-Earths are rocky planets that range from two times the size of our Earth to about the size of Neptune and Uranus. Curiously, they're one of the stellar objects that are missing from our solar system, yet are strangely abundant in exoplanetary systems. Carat 7b is one of those super-Earths, orbiting a main-sequence spectral K0 star, meaning it's orange and a bit cooler than our own, that is 500 light-years from Earth. This planet is five times more massive than our Earth and features a surface temperature of a blistering 2,326 degrees Celsius. Again, eat your heart out, Venus. To put that temperature in perspective, that's a little less than half the temperature of our own sun. Less than 1,000 degrees away from being as hot as the surface of a red dwarf star and hot enough to vaporize rock. This exoplanet is also tidally locked to its host star, Carrot 7. It takes just 20.4 hours for this unfortunate world to orbit its host star. In fact, it's thought that it was once a gas giant before its star ripped its gaseous layers from its surface, leaving a scorching, barren shell behind. Bruce Fegley Jr. of Washington University in St. Louis said, The only atmosphere this object has is produced from vapor arising from hot molten silicates in a lava lake or lava ocean. That probably sounds pretty frightening in and of itself, but when Fegley Jr. and his colleagues tried to model it, they found that when a storm front, and I put that in quotes, moves in on this world, it would rain pebbles of rocky fragments. But instead of gently pattering into the surface of lakes and rivers, this rain would fall into lakes of molten lava. So yeah, even if you manage to somehow make it to the surface of this nightmare planet, no spacesuit or protective equipment on Earth would save you.
situated somewhere between the Cygnus and Lyra constellations and orbiting a host star that is very similar to our own, Kepler-10b orbits at a distance that is 20% closer than Mercury orbits our Sun. While this strange exoplanet is only 1.4 times the mass of Earth, its mass is truly incredible, clocking in at 4.5 times the mass of our home worlds. It takes less than one Earth day to complete a single orbit around Kepler-10, and as you can probably imagine, at that distance, temperatures get up to 1,371 degrees Celsius. And while all of that is certainly going to be cause for concern for any unfortunate soul bound for planet fall on Kepler-10b, the fact that the Kepler Astro-Seismic Science Consortium detected high-frequency variations in the star's brightness would be a much bigger cause for alarm. These variations in frequency are typically attributed to something called starquakes. The thing is, other than here, starquakes have only been detected in magnetars, which should tell you that Kepler-10 is up to no good. Basically, a starquake results when the crust of a neutron star undergoes a sudden change, remarkably similar to what happens on Earth when an earthquake results from the subduction of a continental plate, but with one key frightening difference. The magnetic field of the star generating the starquake twists and twists, resulting in a bright beam of radiation that gets attached to a fiery bubble, followed by a powerful burst of energy. Not only that, but the incredible tidal forces exerted on Kepler-10 would make the radiation a serious problem, even on the planet's perpetual night side. We established in our Black Hole series that quasars can consume entire galaxies, artificially aging them. But this one is on a completely different level. SDSS J135246.37 plus 4239.3.5 features violent relativistic jets that reach a staggering 13% the speed of light. And seriously, considering this is the most powerful quasar we've ever detected, it deserves a much more badass name than the series of numbers and letters I just rattled off. One reason why this doomed galaxy's relativistic jets are so powerful could have something to do with the fact that its supermassive black hole is 2,000 times more massive than Sagittarius A star, the one at the center of our own galaxy. The wind generated by the supermassive black hole is so powerful that it's left scientists scratching their heads for quite some time. As you all know, Sagittarius A star has had its own rocky past. The energetic jets that formed the Fermi bubbles would have left a dazzling display that would have been visible from Earth if there was anyone there to see it. But if the Earth had been unfortunate enough to have been born in SDSS J135246.37, plus 23923.5, then it would have certainly been doomed from the start. The Black Widow Pulsar has a scary name, but its properties are far scarier. New stars are being formed within this nebula, and their births are causing powerful stellar and particle winds that have caused radiation to skyrocket. From our vantage point here on Earth, these winds take on the telling shape of a spider. And if you haven't guessed yet, pulsars are yet another type of neutron star. These things are extremely compact, no bigger than a large city like New York or Boston, but they contain far more mass than our sun and spin at insane intervals, over 600 times per second, shining a beacon of light across the universe like lighthouses of doom. Yeah, I know I said the same thing in another video, so what? And if you thought that a higher level of radiation was all you'd have to worry about in the Black Widow Pulsar, think again. Because pulsars emit powerful gamma rays that would cook you faster than you could say, <coughs> yeah, that. If you dug this video, be sure to drop me a like and comment some places you'd like to see in part three. I'm making a list. And be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss an episode of Science Get. Oh, would you look at those names? Thank you, everyone. And it's done. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.